Okay. Okay. I think that's good. Got a one drop. Two one drops. Luther, that's good. That's the one thing I hate about I playing at rank one. You just I keep playing like dumpster light. legend players. Which is not necessarily what you want to do. Sometimes it gets you free wins. Often it just gets you weird decks, non-meta decks, and at rank one you're playing meta decks because they're good against the meta. So non-meta decks are often not good against what you're playing. Anyways, I like keeping the one drops, especially since I can coin them both out. It's a pretty good start. I like to draw some two or three drops to follow them up. We got another one drop. Now we have a lot of options. Let's see what he does in turn one, though. Oh, he kept his whole hand. That ain't good. So this is probably going to be a 2-4 next turn. Is there any way I can play around that? By playing my own 1-3, I guess. Which I can't really mm. buff, though. I mean, I could. If that hits correctly. Like, I, I don't want to play Bluegill Warrior next turn just to clear something off. Ugh. I'm going to go and try and hit the buff on the Vile Fin. It's on him. Two, three. Comes a three next turn. Seems better to have the two, three, which will become a three, three next turn, as opposed to a one, three. I can actually clear the board now, which is a pretty good thing to do, I'd say. And next turn I can pump out a couple. True Silver might help me get the board back, so that's good news. But yeah, I think I need to clear here. Oh. Part there. But yeah, clearing the board. Outstanding. Next turn's looking a little weak unless I can draw a two drop. Let's hope he doesn't have a one drop here. Alright. That's pretty ugly. But I have the Megasaur next turn, which is pretty fantastic in this position. We're playing basically the same deck, so this is interesting. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that sucks. If I can again clear the board. So I think that's what I gotta do. For justice. Maybe could have thought about it a little more, but I don't think playing the Megasaur on that guy, and he's almost certainly gonna die. I mean, I guess he could have gotten Divine Shield or something. But I can also play the Chum maybe next turn with the Megasaur if I want to. He'll probably take uh, Noble Sacrifice here, I would expect. That makes the chum much worse. So, turn 5, if he had Finja, he would have played it, and this top deck would have probably won me the game on the spot. Question is, do I hang on to this? He didn't play the secret. That's interesting. If you're not going to play the secret, you want to protect something better, maybe? Let me 
it's too late. But this won't buff anything. Really too bad. Plus three health is probably what I was looking for. Do I want to make it a two four or a three two? Probably a two four. For justice. Gives me pretty good board presence. I can back it up with a true silver next turn. If he draws Fenja and drops it, the Kodo will wreck him. Just a question of how long can I hold on to this Kodo in hopes of that. I probably should play the Kodo on the next, like, two or three drop that I can play it on. I mean, the chance of him drawing Fenja. Mm. He would have played it last turn if he had it. Unless he was saving the a redemption with it. He's probably got his own Megasaur here. Yeah, let's hope it's not poisonous. Or plus three is pretty good for him. Yeah. So Spike Ridge Steed would be good here. Except for that poisonous mofo. So I can play my own True Servo Champion, clear his dude. I mean, I'd like to be able to Kodo the 1-1 one, one, and protect, but then I can't clear the 5-4, which is a horrible trade. I can Spike Ridge Steed next turn on my 1-1, one, one, which hopefully lives. I think that's what I have to do. Is there any reason to leave that alive? Let me think. No, I don't want him to Spike Ridge Steed it. Something with Poisonous would be a real pain in the ass. For justice. Let's ride Spike Rich Steed to victory. Come on, top deck your Fender, bro. Or I could top deck my Fender, that would be nice. Looking at 5% each turn, though. Not very good. Hmm. Pretty unlikely that he kills this though, so Spike Ridge Steed should be a thing. <coughs> it's a pretty powerful turn, you know? So it kills that. Hmm. So that's the Noble Sacrifice, or that's the Redemption? So I prefer to attack it myself if it gets redeemed by Steed and kill it anyways. If it's mm. Getaway Kodo, maybe if it's Getaway Kodo I want to attack that, knowing that I'm just going to Spike Ridge Steed that, so he gets that back in his hand. It's usually Getaway Kodo. For justice! Problem is the lack of cards. I mean, I guess we kind of have the same amount of cards, it's just that I have this situational one here I need to get rid of. Very glad that he didn't have Tyrion there. It's a lot of little dudes. Back, don't I? Okay. So I can clear one, two Murlocs if I want. Hydrologist. Let's see what it gives me. So I'm thinking the getaway Kodo is what I want. Noble Sacrifice just blocks a 1-1. One, one. <coughs> Getaway Kodo, well, Pendant's probably pretty bad. Let's go with the Kodo. So now the question is, do I want, is it worth it to use the Kodo here, or should I just play a Seer and buff two Murlocs? 
So we know we're gonna just try and keep his board clear. Play the getaway coder to get that back. I mean, if I can't kill both, then I don't really want to Kodo that. I'm gonna get the buff. So, got three legendaries that either of us can draw. Probably whoever draws the first one wins. Although, having the four dudes on the board definitely helps against Tarim. Divine Favor is starting to look pretty useless. Um, Megasaur would be nice, War Leader would be nice, so... Kings would be nice, so maybe eight cards I'd like to see. That's a pretty good chance, I mean, it's almost 50%. Okay, at least it wasn't Tyrion. Oh, that's still definitely problematic. There's my Fenja. That is what I want to see. That's really good for me. And then I think I want to protect these Murlocs. Because they're very likely to get buffed by a war leader. Now, if he doesn't draw like Tyrion or something, I want him to draw his Fenja. And let's be honest. Oh my God. Nice Stonehill Defender, huh? Well, that's something easy for my Fender to eat up. The menagerie is for guests only. Now that is not very yummy. Man, that was such a good ah. Uh, to get that off of there, and he drew. Well, that's nice. I still think I want to keep that Kodo. The fact that he, he just drew a... <coughs> That's very curious. Pretty sure he just drew three cards off the Curator. Let me think. Maybe I'm wrong. Do I want a Divine Favor first? No, I want to get the Murlocs out first, right? <laughs> There's a war leader, which I wanted. Now to find favor. Ooh, a second war leader. Or a consecration. Not sure the second war leader does that much. Consecration. Oof. Bluegill. Question is, does he have some sort of like uh, board clear here? <laughs> Man, my, that board really got big quickly, didn't it? The quality doesn't really work. I mean, it does, but not completely. Ooh, Tyrion. Oh, Tyrion, my homie. So he runs equality in this deck. I mean, he's really messing with me now. But I can pull two more Murlocs out of my deck. I wonder. It's too bad I can't do them. I mean, if I could pull the Murlocs before I killed this guy, this guy would get a bunch of buffs. That's clearly not happening. So I can trade one, two, three. Pull the Murlocs out. Well, I can actually Let do this. Make that a five. So I can save one dude. So it becomes five. One. Two. Pulls me some Murlocs. Really just kind of thins my deck, right? And the Tyrion hopefully can finish the job. I just really don't know where this came from. I mean, he's playing Bluegill Warriors, and then a Blessing of Kings, and all of a sudden, this is like a hybrid. 
All of a sudden we've got a uh, Primordial Drake. Do I think he plays Venja? It's probably going to be my best chance to Consecrate. That's not what I wanted to see, but it's not horrible. So I can play that, and then that. Play it again. Consecrate. And then address the face. 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm two off lethal. I have Tarum. I have... So, four, five of my next six... Of my next eight cards? Five of my next seven cards can give me lethal. The others are Cold Light Seer, which will buff my board. And Rock Pool Hunter, which me will give me think. one damage. But I need two. Another equality. Holy shit. Top. And what? Forbidden healing. What are you playing, bro? Okay, Tarim is pretty good. Obviously. So we're gonna clear the board. Well, we're gonna attack with this first. Test me, child. I'm gonna create a dude. Doesn't matter if we clear before or after. Uh, do I wanna play Tarim here? Yeah, he's not gonna play anything big enough that I wanna save it, right? Alright. Jeez. What was that, man? Making my life tough there at the end. Ooh. Dumpster Devil, bro. That is a third tier Dumpster Devil. 3666. Well, this is what happens usually when you make Legend on the second to last day of the season. Which I'm actually very good at making Legend at the very end. But it's a little better this month because I did spend two weeks in Italy. From the 9th to the 23rd. I did play some Hearthstone in Italy. Not much though. Mostly at night right before bed. Maybe over two weeks. Maybe 20-30 games. I mean I climbed a little. But most of my climbing was before and after the trip. So glad to make Legend this season. Given that I took mostly two weeks off. And it's my 20th Legend. So congratulations to me. Big 2-0. I mean, it's a big round number, otherwise it doesn't really have much significance. Um, let's see, before I go uh, sign off and get dinner ready for the wifey, let's take a look at some stats. So I'm going to switch us to the right monitor real quick, I think. Oh, yes. And then we can pull up deck tracker stats constructed we'll fling that over there got the current season it's a pretty good season less than 200 games always nice uh, 121 69 64 percent that's pretty good I was very interested watching uh, HCT I don't know last weekend maybe the last two weekends really and seeing them post that stat, I don't really remember what they were, but they were posting a stat like fastest, uh, fastest to legend, like how many games it was. Um, so I actually took some interest in that. And I had a season where I was like, uh, it was 133 games. And I'll find it here in a second, but um, I definitely had some seasons over 300 games. So that obviously could not happen this season. So I'm pretty happy with a 64% win rate. Um, let's see, what did we play? You versus... I always have to question these stats here. I don't know when I played Hunter versus Warlock. Include archive deck, sure. Yeah, I don't know about Hunter versus Warlock. Does this change anything? Change that to ranked. Okay, so it's only ranked. 
So it's actually 63%. I don't even know why I thought this was set to not track anything other than ranked games. So 119 and 69 what was it before that. 121. So I played two non ranked games. Maybe friendly quest matches or something. I can't imagine that I played Hunter, but whatever. Um, most played deck, I played Evolve Shaman. That's what really got me the climb when I came back from vacation last week. I was probably like rank 7 or 8 or something. Played Evolve Shaman with a 70% win rate, which went obviously very well. 5 0 against Mage, that's always nice. Paladin, not very good though. Bleh. That's not a big sample size. Fastest deck. Okay, so I did play some Token Druid. Still don't, I guess I played maybe one game of Midrange Hunter. I still don't even know. Concede Shaman, slowest deck. Yeah, tried that out as well in the beginning, just because it was fun. Uh, we can look at the non-percents. So, with Mage 24 and 21, that's not very good. I was trying to play Burn Mage. I think I played mostly Burn Mage over my vacation. Um, burn, Discover Mage, whatever you want to call it. Fun deck, but is not as good as it was last month, which I realized when I got back and checked the uh, VS spreadsheet. Uh, but Paladin did really well for me, 42 and 22. There's even a bad streak in there, though, where I played a uh, Control Paladin. Control Paladin dropped me from like high rank 2 to almost rank 4. That was my big drop for the season, but I managed to come back. Rogue 5 and 1. Played some quest rogue just to complete quests. Shaman 44 and 20. So then we can see. What, what, what turns? Coin region. I guess we can't see that. Eh. I think that's pretty much enough stats. The only thing I wanted to see was custom season. That I don't even know where we're looking. Season 20. That was Legend. It was recent, I think. Just where I had that really quick Legend season. No. Nope. That's pretty good there, but not not the one I'm looking for. No, that's only to rank five. Yeah, that's only to rank 6. This is kind of where I took off before uh, rotation. Legend, 1746. Okay, 27. That was only to rank 2. 28. That's to Legend. 29. I think it was recently. Is this it? Yeah, that's pretty good when you win less than 100 games. But oh, but I only made it to rank four, so that's not very good. Only to rank two. Rank five. Rank four. Maybe that was the break. I don't know when it was. Legend 359. You know why this is not working out for me? It's because the question is how many games, not legend games. Can't look at legend games. Breaks your stats. So this is the season, I think. Ranked 76 and 48. Highest rank, rank 1. So what if I say legend 1? Oh, did I not get to legend this season? Rank rank one. The thing is, it doesn't know how often I get to legend at the end of the season. Don't play any games, so it doesn't record any highest rank legend games. If you just get to legend, don't play. So I don't think I actually made it to legend this game or that season. Season thirty-five. I don't even know when that is. Who are these people? Rank. Doesn't even make sense. Highest rank, rank one.
Uh, now I'm confused. It only says up to rank four. I don't really understand that. Why? Highest rank, rank one, but it doesn't have games. I don't even know what season we're in. 36, 37, really that many seasons? 38. Current season is 38. Right. a lot of games, for me at least. This is the one that I don't understand, right? I feel like it's just confused. Starting to feel pointless, I'm not getting anywhere. Maybe it's this one. Highest rank, Legend 1746. That's not very good. Obviously, I don't play very much at Legend, but I think this is the season, season 26. So from rank 1 to 25, I played 86 and 47. Yeah, that's 133 games. <coughs> Legend 1. See, I didn't do very well that season, did I? At least not at Legend rank. 108 and 71. If I look at the matches, I was just dumpster Legend most of, this, most of the time, right? So I got to Legend super fast. This is Loyan's Bloodlust Shaman. 133 games, and then who knows, I've played a bunch of random shit, what is this, Rogue, Nazoth, Miracle Rogue, yeah, that'll tell you why I stayed at shitty ranks, because <laughs> I played a ton of Nazoth, Miracle Rogue, I guess I was just having fun, that's why the best I did was uh, in the beginning, my highest rank was my first rank, I never got back there, and now you know why, Tempo Warrior, some decks I deleted, I guess. Hmm. Oh well. Good stuff. Alright, well. Time to make some dinner for the wifey. 20x legend. Go me. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Peace.